This is mini lecture number eight, covering night sections three, three, and three, four. We've already covered three, one, and three, two. We did that the first week of class. That was vector addition, vector subtraction, vector multiplication. We did it all graphically. So at this point, you should know how to compute a plus b, a minus b, a minus two b, and you should be able to do that whether or not the tails of the vectors are set up for you to do it easily. A common thing to do is to have the x-axis to the right and the y-axis up. And if there's a third direction, uh, oftentimes that will be coming out of the board. If there's only 2D, this is pretty much the standard situation. However, I have been saying quite a bit of the time that we're not just going to stick with the standard situation. The standard situation is in fact arbitrary. So we should be able to do this situation with x to the left and y up. And the whole thing rotated a little bit. Hmm. Now one thing I haven't done though, is these axes are still at a right angle to each other. There are coordinate systems where the axes aren't even at right angles to each other, um, but we're not going to worry about those yet. So let's suppose you have a vector. And you want to ask about that vector's components. Well, that vector's components depend on the coordinate system that you're drawing it in. And so this vector, which seems to point up and to the right, and with the standard coordinate system, would have a mostly y component and a little bit of x component. In this coordinate system, it's completely different. How do we see what it has in this system? Well, we need to resolve it into a vector along this axis, some vector in that direction, and some vector in that direction. And graphically, you can see what to do here. The vector that we want to resolve this vector into is a vector that goes along the x-axis that much, and then a perpendicular vector that goes along the y-axis that much. So if we call this the vector A, we have broken A down into two vectors, a vector along x and, in addition, a vector along y. Now if you go draw some actual units on this, let's say this was a velocity vector, then the units on this would be uh, one meter per second two meters per second, three meters per second, four meters per second, and then going this way, minus one meters per second, minus two meters per second, minus three meters per second, minus four meters per second. So it looks to me like this thing in its x direction, which right like this, its x component is equal to minus 3.5 meters per second. And the y component of this thing looks to be two meters per second. So we write a sub y equals two meters per second. Okay, so now for some tricks. Let us introduce a vector that we call the unit vector in the x direction. And this is a new term, a new definition, and we're going to need some new notation for it. So we create a vector that is one unit long. I can't even really draw it on this. You might say, hey, hang it off all the way there to one meter per second. No, I can't even draw it on this because it points that way, but it is dimensionless. So we're introducing a dimensionless unit length vector pointing in the positive x direction. Now there are two notations for this. It's either known as i hat, and we don't write the little dot over the i when we have the hat because it makes too much clutter. So it's either known as i hat, or sometimes to emphasize that it is the unit vector in the x direction, it is known as x hat. Similarly, the unit vector in the y direction is known as j hat or sometimes it's known as y hat. And of course, if there were 3D, then there would be a third vector, k hat. And it would also alternatively be known as z hat. 
Okay, just for the moment here, let's just make it I hat, J hat, and K hat. And since we're in 2D, it's just I hat and J hat. So there's a way of writing this thing A now. This thing is minus 3.5 meters per second times I hat. That's that's that vector. 1, 2, 3.5 meters per second long with a minus sign. Flips this thing around and we have a vector that is that long in the negative x direction. And then we have this second component of A, which is that. To get A, we need that other thing and that is 2 meters per second. I'll be nice and two significant um, figures accurate here and say 2.0 meters per second times j hat. Now this was really good for this example, but in general, a is equal to a sub x times i hat plus a sub y times j hat. And if we're in a third dimension, a sub z times k hat. Now you can do all the usual algebraic things you'd like with these. Everything works uh, that you would expect. Uh, you can combine like terms, you can do addition and subtraction. If I take 3a, it just makes it 3ax, 3ay, and 3az. Um, if I have a minus b, here's a nice kind of thing that you might hope would work, and it does. If you take uh, the vector a minus b, well, that vector, you might hope, would be uh, AX times I hat plus AY times J hat plus AZ times uh, K hat minus BX times I hat plus BY times J hat plus BZ times K hat. And that turns into ax minus bx times i hat plus ay minus by times j hat plus az minus bz times k hat. So all the things that you might hope would work, they do. <laughs> the uh, components of two vectors, when resolved, they do into components along the i hat, j hat, and k hat directions turn into just the difference of the components. And if this was a sum, this would just be boom, 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 and boom. And this was a plus 2b, this would be a plus 2bx, 2by, and 2bz, and then this would be ax plus 2bx, ay plus 2by, and az plus 2bz. So all the addition, subtraction, and algebra that you'd like to have work, works. You know, if you're in 2D and you have a vector, let's go back to the nice easy orientation here. And this is some angle theta, or alternatively, that's some angle phi. Then this vector A has some length that we're going to denote like that. And that length has whatever the units that the vector a itself has. So if a is in meters per second, then the length of a is in meters per second. And lengths are never negative. Uh, even if a vector points this direction, its length is still a positive quantity. It's that. Now, in two dimensions, if I resolve a into ax times i hat plus ay times j hat, then you can see there's a nice Pythagorean relationship for the length of A in terms of AX and AY. Because of this side, whether it be positive or negative, is supposed to obey this relationship. Length of A had better be the square root, and it's the positive square root, a length is always positive, of the length of this side squared plus the length of that side squared, which is AX squared plus AY squared. Now you might be wondering what happens in three dimensions. I'm gonna draw 2D with X going across, 
but the positive y direction going deep into the board, okay? So this is supposed to represent x in the positive direction. And then this perspective view here is supposed to represent y going deep into the board and negative y direction is coming out of the board at you. The third direction, I'm starting to try to draw a three-dimensional uh, coordinate system. The third direction, z, will be up. So let's suppose you have a vector that is uh, a vector b, which is equal to bx times i hat plus by times j hat plus bk bz times k hat. Okay, well, let's just look at the first part of this vector, okay? That's b is equal to bx times i hat plus by times j hat. So you go over out here until you get to b sub x. And you go along here until you get to b sub y. And the vector in that plane, the vector in the plane that has that length along the, this axis and that length along the axis that's going deep into the board, there's that vector right there. And we know the length of that vector right there because that's just good old Pythagorean theorem. This side has length bx and this side has length by, then the length of that vector there is, just for a moment here, I'll call it little b, this length right here, which is not the whole length of the vector b, it's just the length of the vec this first two parts of the vector b, is equal to square root of bx squared plus by squared. Now let's add in the third component of this thing, which is there's another, uh, uh, one more perpendicular component, which is bz times k hat. So we go up an amount, bz. We go up an amount, bz. This vector here is bz times k hat. Ba-boom. That's how high that thing is. Bz time, it's bz high. And if you want to include the direction, it's bz times k hat. Now our actual total length of this vector then is the length there. Okay, now this is going kind of somewhat into the board. It's going somewhat up and it's going somewhat to the right. Hopefully you can visualize that. And this is once again a right triangle. And we've just argued that this side of this right triangle so length b is square root of bx squared plus by squared. Meanwhile, this length here is bz. And this thing's a right triangle. Oh, well then that means we can apply the Pythagorean theorem again. Let's call this side c. And of course, c is the total length of b. We have uh, the formula that c squared, Pythagorean, is b squared plus bc squared. Okay, so you put those two together, take the square root of both sides of this, and you have that the length of b is the square root of little b squared plus bz squared. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. almost done here. Let's make, put those two things together. If I take this formula for b here and I put it into there, you see where I have b squared there, little b squared right there? I need to square the right-hand side, which of course is bx squared plus by squared. So then I have c is equal to the square root of b squared, which is bx squared plus by squared, plus bz squared. I clean up, I'm going to box it. In three dimensions, if a vector has components bx, by, and bz, then its length So I've covered all of 3, 3 and all of 3, 4, and you guys should definitely be able to now go through all of chapter 3 and work on Knight's examples and sidebars yourself. You'll have a problem set due on Tuesday night, and then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be able to devote ourselves to chapter 4, which is motion in two dimensions, lots of interesting special cases, and actually a pretty challenging chapter, so it's good we have three full days to work on it.